Hello, and welcome to the Volunteer Virtues Network. My name is Michael, and I'll be your host on Something is Rotten in the State of Denmark. Today, I have the wonderful Kelly... <coughs> I'll try again. I have the wonderful Kelly Darwins with me for a chat about micronations, if we can stick to the topic, and <laughs> what else we just get in touch with. Welcome to you, Kelly. Oh, thank you, thank you. It's yep, a pleasure we're... to have you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. So we should talk about something of what we've been talking about so far as into the micronations. It's a pretty interesting topic. Yeah, I think it sounds like just from the few that we've talked about, uh, and I don't know, I mean, there's a huge exhaustive list, but <laughs> they, they, seem, they seem to start off at least wanting to be free of the uh, country or free of wherever their home nation is. You know, I don't know if they end up that way, but they start off that way. <laughs> yeah, I, I could imagine that. Like, I, I, I was reading something earlier about it, and they, they were actually compared to guilds in role-playing games. <laughs> oh! They... But a lot of them are apparently... Are, functioning online so they're just random people living across the world under the same nation so it's right right there was that one there's like a network like a, they call it an empire but it's like this you know one square mile of rock you know off the coast of new zealand and there's another patch of land up in <laughs> you know up in canada somewhere that nobody wants so they claimed it as part of their empire <laughs> <laughs> they should probably take that those spots in Siberia or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> right? There was one, um, I don't know, did you ever get to look into that one that I was telling you about? He was interviewed on um, Freedom Themes, and he was, oh, I think he, I he was in a Arizona or New, New Mexico or something, and they said, do you still have to pay taxes to the United States? And he says, well, it depends on how you look at it. He says, <laughs> "I look at it." He says, "I look at it as giving, as the benev as my benevolent nation giving foreign aid to the United States." <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty, pretty interesting way to look at it. <laughs> but, but yeah, and I was like, yeah, but I guess, I guess, if you put it that way, it's, he's like, yeah, we're benevolent here in this kingdom, so we're willing to give them foreign aid. <laughs> I was talking with a friend about it earlier, and he, his first conclusion was that they must be pretty rich, all those people, to declare themselves sovereign states. <laughs> I, I would think that they were just regular people that didn't care about what they were living in, but it could be a possibility that some, some of them had money. Unless there, was one, there was one that was like seasteading. They were, they were literally in the ocean. And there's a picture of them like waving off of it, and they're in the middle of the ocean. I guess they should, they might, they might have some yeah, some money. But I mean, the guy in in London who's declaring his flat a, a sovereign nation, that guy is probably not loaded with money. But that's <laughs> still, I, I think that's even more awesome, awesome than the some right. guy just doing something and spending money. But, right. So that's. That's pretty cool, and I want like I want every person to have their own sovereign nation. But that's, that's right. That's how, That's the point. Is that I mean, you might you might not be able to be recognized by the UN or whatever, but I would say that you know, if you can if you can first declare yourself a sovereign nation of one or your family as a sovereign nation of people, then you know you could probably get away with eventually networking with a bunch of other sovereigns and just quietly going about your business i mean it would seem that the less attention you get the better you know? I, I, <laughs> so. I saw a video on facebook uh, not so long ago about this british girl i think she had uh, actually got the approval of the government to declare her own sovereignty and she hadn't uh, didn't have to pay taxes or anything Really? Yep. In in from Britain? Yeah, I'm not sure she was from Britain, but oh. she had an accent that I concluded was from Britain. So <laughs> okay, <laughs> she could have been from every, anywhere, but still, and I can't remember the details about it. But it was pretty cool to watch. 
she had to go. Did she have to go petition her government? Though she had to. Yeah, ask I mean, she had the seal of approval from them, <laughs> but but she still got it. And yeah, really well, the, I know there's a process here in the United States too to to declare yourself a sovereign. I don't know how long it takes or what kind of money it takes, but you can do it, and there are people who have done it. I just yeah, I don't know. I was uh, the the guy I mentioned about uh, that. Talk, uh, t told me a bit about the two camp. Um, he was um, he was asking questions about the law for a, a, a town in Denmark to to declare its own sovereignty uh -huh. away from the state. And I had actually no <laughs> no idea what the law is about it, but I don't think it's possible in Denmark at least. But you talked a bit about that town in the U.S. that. Didn't have an income tax or police or anything. Right, right, right. Max, Nebraska. <laughs> it's a. If, if you ever get a chance to look up the video, just it's this old guy who's narrating all of it, and he's, you know, but um, he basic. They basically aren't incorporated. So, um, it's it is a town in the United States, and it is part of the United States, but they aren't incorporated, so they don't have any city taxes. And they don't, and um, they don't have any like sales tax or any sort of taxes within their incorporation. They have to still pay income taxes to the federal government and everything, but they, but they don't have um, because they're not incorporated. They don't have to have worry about like uh, fuel taxes or anything that that are specifically assigned to their township. Uh, everything that happens in that town is funded through fundraising. Literally, like, you can opt not to give if you don't want to, you know, so if they say, well, we want to create a park, and you say, well, no, I'm not really, I don't care about a park, I don't want to give, then you don't give, and nobody does anything, says anything to you, puts a gun to your head or anything, they just move on to the next. So, and, uh, you have a live example of an anarchy functioning, or is there some that, of, of council or something there? They have, I think, I don't know if they even have a council. I don't even think they have that. They have just, the, there's a, a, the person, the, the the group of people that are responsible for raising the money is um, the women's group, like a little women's club, you know, like from so a, the local church or something. Voluntary actions. That's, that's 100%. Yeah, that city is 100% voluntary. So we they don't, actually have a live example of it. <laughs> and I keep right. Yeah, other than Somalia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> oh, so, so that's actually a pretty good new news. I, I like that. That's yeah. That's not bad. But they do have the income tax from the federal government, but how much can that be when they don't have the income tax to the city or or taxes on everything else? That's well. The thing, the the, the beauty of that is, is that the where they are, they're if you look at a map of the United States and put like your finger right in the middle of it that's kind of where they are so they're not like by a big city they're not very urban or anything like that they're rather rural um so the cost of living there is cheap to begin with it's one of the cheaper places to live so i think i was telling you that a house out there could go for as little as 10 to twenty thousand dollars. there isn't i mean you know it's not like you're right by los angeles or right by new york city you're in the middle of nebraska <laughs> <laughs> You know there is that trade-off, but but at the same time you can't, like you say, there's a, there there can't be that much tax because it's based on a percentage, and there isn't that much income because it doesn't take that much to live there. Yeah. So in the end, even if the federal government taxes you, you you're going to fall into some sort of three to five percent bracket when you know um, effective tax rate because I mean you're just I mean there isn't like these wealthy people living there. There's Middle American, you know, middle class, yeah, working it's class not a people. Community also. For a wealthy person, is it? It could be. I mean, if you yeah, are independently well, wealthy. Yeah, it, it probably could, but but it's wealthy people are usually generally attra attracted to the state for some reason. So, <laughs> it, it, depending on who they are, of course, but but yeah. for some reason, most of the really wealthy people are. Very attracted to the state. <laughs> yeah, unless they're like uh, famous, uh, you know, uh, pundits or something. Yeah, they, but they, but you know, I mean, they're like, I could see somebody who has like an internet based company 
yeah. moving out there, you know, living there and not having to declare much and having to tr- wanting to try and get out of the whole, you know, if you wanted to get off the grid, you could type of thing. Um, but the st- I don't think the state of Nebraska unto itself has much in, in the way of taxes either. So as a state, so the city doesn't have much in terms of taxes. The state of Nebraska isn't very high on the tax scale like New York or California. So they don't. So until it gets to the federal level, they're not really paying a whole lot, which is, I mean, I don't know. I think that's, that's not a bad, I mean, it's, it's certainly a way to reduce your tax burden within the contiguous United States without having to renounce your citizenship or, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or expatriate. So, but yeah, I think there are little enclaves like that. You know, I mean, if you, I don't know if you've read Atlas Shrugs, but no, the, so like there's a, there's a place, you know, that's uh, supposed to be, you know, that John Galt creates that's this little enclave of land that's protected by a hologram and you're supposed, you know, and in that little space is, you know, is people living a government free, in a government free society, you know, they have their own currency. They base it off of gold instead of off of fiat currency and whatever and, and do all that. But I think you can have those kinds of enclaves if you don't trumpet it as much and, and draw as much attention to it. I think I think that's the lesson in you know the liberty movement in general is that you know if you draw a lot of attention to it the government's going to start to close in you know with Bitcoin or like the Free State Project that we have in in New Hampshire when you draw a lot of publicity the government starts to pay attention and starts to scrutinize it and I don't know yeah, but and step into a void grow <laughs> what to do I'm not I'm not entirely sure I, yeah generally trying to protect people or if they just want to stop everyone from having any freedom at all. But Yeah, <laughs> right, right, exactly. But, uh, but yeah, but it's, it's, it's pretty interesting, actually, that it, you can move to places like that and get voluntary actions instead of <laughs> violence. It's, right. it's pretty amazing. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, and I, th- but I think they, I think they're gonna show. I don't think they're gonna be these big places, you know. I think they're gonna be like, like you, like you were talking about, you know, not like near Siberia or something where there's no man's lands and whatnot. I don't know about, I don't know about me going to Siberia, but I, I if you know, being oppressed by weather is any better than being oppressed by a government. <laughs> but, but, uh, but I would say that, you know, the fact that they, these little. <laughs> Pocket, these little communities are popping up. I think that's how it's going to be because I think that's the the most sustainable way for a voluntary society to work is that it's not 300 million people, but just a couple hundred here, a couple hundred here, a couple thousand here, and they're all kind of everywhere, you know? Yeah, I, th- I think you could be right in that. I don't think, um, what's it called? I'm not sure that people actually want to be living close together like that. I don't anyway. I, I can't stand <laughs> being around too many people at the same time. It's, it just gives me the creeps. But yeah. but I think that has more to do with my upgrowing than anything else. But yeah, I, I think... Uh, I, don't, I don't really think that people want to be put that close together. I, th- I, th- I think they want freedom Yep. Deep down, they want freedom, but but this, if you think of a place like Denmark, it's, they've been trained into sit like this close to each other throughout public school for ten years, and and then they grow up and have to take other schools, and yeah, it's just yeah. I, well, I, I like the, I, we met. To explain it. Well, I met, uh, when I, when I, I was just visiting Norway and there were, there were a lot of people from Holland out there. And they said the reason why they go to, to Norway to vacation uh, for holiday is because Holland is so crowded. And I was like, well, I've never been, so I don't know. But I, but they said, yeah, Norway has all this open space that you can, you know, and it's so nice and there's so much nature and all this. And I, and I was like, is Holland really that packed that people are just on top of each other and have to go to another country to <laughs> to, uh, to no, get no. to get away from each other? 
<laughs> I have no idea about that either. I haven't been. <laughs> but, but yeah, I, I could understand why because I, I, I live in a very small town right now and I love, love walking my dog alone. It's, hey, no people, no <laughs> idiots with their little mushy dogs that are seriously aggressive. It's just annoying. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's so annoying. We we had the the breeding thingy over here as well, where no Muslim dogs can be bred, and uh, and the list is pretty huge actually. And and every time you hear about a uh, a big dog coming into a confrontation with a little dog, you always hear about the little dog attacking first and the big dog getting uh, killed for defending itself. Yeah, it's just just horrific. And my dog has actually been bitten by a little dog before, and oh. she grabbed out of uh, it, uh, bit her in the ear, and it started beating a lot. And she uh, bit out of out after it in self defense, and she of course she hit it, but <laughs> lucky me, it didn't get any injuries. But it was like yeah. it was just hysterical it ran around screaming the little dog and <laughs> it was just yeah dog laws yeah. think of <laughs> my worst fear well my fears for a week or something was that the police was going to show up because he knew i lived <laughs> so, yeah. so, right and take your dog <laughs> yeah and it would probably have been killed put down something oh, but, oh my yeah. god yeah and i have a labrador then not the friendliest dogs in the world. <laughs> They're more prone to biting people than actually wrestle dogs are. <laughs> Out here, Labradors are rather, they're rather docile. Uh, they're not family dogs, not at all. They're trained to kill. Uh, Labradors? Yeah, they're bred to kill. They are retrievers. They're hunters. Really? Yeah. Out here, they're like the most, the, the most softest, gentlest, like docile dogs ever. That's yeah, like but, the dog. That's the family dog. Is but, the Labrador or the golden retriever? But the breed itself is bred to kill. Birds really? I did not know. That. I did not know that. Yeah. I did not know that. It's I, uh, <laughs> my, uh, my dad and his dad are hunters, and they have always had uh, Labradors. Uh, my my granddad he had had another dog before he got Labradors, but. Other than that, they they've been attracted to the the breed of Labrador, and most of the the people they hunt with have Labradors as well. Wow, I didn't know that. It is because they're so easily to train to pick up stuff and come with it. So, huh? Yeah, pretty, pretty good hunters <laughs> actually. They're retrievers. That's what they're bred for to mm -hmm. find the game and kill it if it's you know, still alive. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but um but yeah so that uh, we were talking about the the little kingdom of elora or whatever it's pronounced is that what it's called is that what it's called yeah. elora okay Eleora or something e e l l e o r e something like that okay and, and it's just this tiny island in the middle of sealand Shelan uh, on Danish, and it was bought by a couple of teachers in uh, in '44, I think it was, just for uh, when the economy was crashing and every country they could see every country was just going down back then, and and they decided to do it for their school or something like that, and okay. it evolved from there. I haven't been read reading all that much about it still, but but the general conclusion is that it was a pretty anarchist society back then actually so oh. so there was a society of people that were living there it wasn't just meant to it, it like, was, for trips. at first it was meant for school trips or something like okay. that. but it ended up with the, them actually moving there and starting their own community I'm still not sure if they follow the Danish law or they have their own but I've never heard about it before until a month ago and it's literally just in front of my nose. <laughs> so, yeah, it's right there in Denmark, just off the off the coast. Is it? It's off the. Yeah, it's in the middle of 
Roskilde, Roskilde what was it called? Uh, Fjord, uh, I can't remember what the name was again. Two seconds. Google Translate is awesome. <laughs> uh, inlet, uh, Roskilde Inlet. It, it's it's uh, it's uh, inlet in the middle of Sealand with a lot of uh, sea, <laughs> and there's this <laughs> tiny island in the middle of it. And okay. So it's basically a kingdom in the middle of Denmark. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Oh, in the middle of Denmark. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Holy crap. Yeah. That's interesting. I had never heard about it before a month ago. I think I saw an article about some small micronations on on um, Liberty Me, I think. I'm not right. sure. I think I posted it or something, but I can't remember if it was on Liberty Me or where it was from. And that was the first time I ever heard about it. <laughs> Right, but I mean, but then to find out that it's you know that there's others, uh, you know, some who are doing it for entertainment purposes, I guess, but others who really you know who are trying to just yeah get away, you know, and get out of the the system altogether and and do that. I mean, you see, you know, for, I think you know it's, it's like anything else. It starts as just a community. It starts with just an idea or a group of people in a in a cafe talking about it and then next thing you know yeah next thing you know they're you know they're like oh well, let's go buy this you know and then they do it as a joke but then you know it's next you know and then they're like well we could just hang out here and stay here and then you know the next one thing one thing after another they they have a small community that's do it has its own way of running yeah that would be so awesome to start something like that actually there have been a lot of talk in denmark uh, no, not a lot, but there have been some talk in Denmark, and there is a project from some liberals with making something like uh, New Hampshire, where they want to oh. where they want to move to a town and just take over the town <laughs> and make oh. it a liberal place to stay. I think it, it's probably a good idea, but I'm not that excited about it. I don't think it it will come to anything at all, but. I'm, I might consider traveling there and see what it is if they ever do anything about it. So, the, so in in Denmark, then to be liberal is to be more, is to be less government or. Uh, yeah, except you still up for like forty percent tax. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And the, the the Liberal Party actually just came out and said they wanted to to put the the, the criminal age lower for children when they want to join the Syrian fight. <laughs> they want to join the, the the militia down there to fight in the war or whatever. You have you have Danish children wanting to join the Syrian army? Oh the the not the Syrian army, but the, the ISIS and stuff like that. You have but Danish that, children wanting to join ISIS. But they're, they're targeting Muslims. But but uh, it's they said on suspicious grounds they want to throw people in jail for once just to in case. the country and go to Syria or whatever they want to go to or Palestine or whatever it was. I didn't I didn't care much about it. I just told them my opinion and. Uh. If the debate it was oh horrific, I don't know. They they want to punish people on the grounds of suspicion, not That's for not doing right. anything wrong, but just wanting right, right. to go there. Right, right, and exactly. That's not very liberal in my head. <laughs> right, right, exactly. Well, I mean, so if you're a doctor and you want to go there to help, you know, in triage, you're, you're, you're also arrested for that. Shut up. Ah. Just they put out the example as I actually have it here. Hold on. They put out the example of but where they said No, that wasn't the one. I'm not sure. Yeah, it might be. So people that want to go to that want to travel thousands of miles, they have to be punished if they want to kill people. 
I'm gonna try again. People that want to go a thousand miles to kill people, they have to be punished before they do it. So by that standard, they had have to punish every single soldier in Denmark for going to right. like that. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. If it's not state sanctioned, then it's then it's wrong. Yeah. So, huh? Interesting. Interesting. I can't find the thread. I was seeing it earlier. It's yeah, but it was something like that. And when if they suspect you for doing it, they can arrest you. That, that was what they put out as. There's a there's a movie or a book about that called Minority Report. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> I've seen the movie. <laughs> I was. Hey. Yeah, they, well, we've got three psychics sitting here in the parliament building, so they said that you were going to commit a crime. So before you go and commit the crime, I'm going to arrest you. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> it was a pretty good movie, actually. but yeah, Until it became real. Yes. <laughs> then, it got, then it got scary. <laughs> but it, it was a movie about conspiracies, so I, I thought it was a pretty good movie. You saw that, yeah. that, that one red ball where it was a... Uh, they used it to murder someone, so to not right. convict it. So that's so. It was about conspiracy and whistleblower blowing in my head. That's so I like. Yeah, the movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but uh, but, but uh, yeah. The, uh, go ahead. Continue. I, don't, wait. I was gonna. I was just gonna say that you know I. I wonder, you know, if it's not, you know, because I think right now the 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 status people want to vote into, you know, vote the change into the system and fix the system that's there, wherever you are, wherever you are. I mean, honestly, everybody says that, oh, democracy, we'll just vote it away, you know, and that'll and then it'll be fixed, and you know, but I don't think that's it. I think it's just going to be a bunch of people. Ultimately, the the real revolution is going to be people who just get so fed up that they just. They, you know, fuck it, I'm out, you know, and I'm and just decide not to, you know, they just stop, they just stop paying their taxes, or they just stop, you know, listening to the police, or they just, you know, or they just move off somewhere off the grid and don't bother with the state at all, you know. I mean, there's a lot of people doing that, just like as individuals, not as communities yet, but I mean, and I think in that you're gonna have, you know, and then when you start the pe when people start adding to their numbers. Then you'll have your little micro nations, and you know, and but you know, do I? I mean, if I still need permission from my country or my state to say it's okay for me to be this, then I'm not free yet. You know, what I mean, <laughs> I mean, right? I mean, you're not free if you have to ask for permission. I, I so, broke that permission any time, so. Right. I mean, and that's, I don't understand how other countries have managed to establish themselves, you know, as sovereign from the United States. Other than to say, you know what, I'm my own country, leave me alone. And and other countries defending that, you know. I mean, look at, it's only when other countries don't defend the rights of, of the so and sovereignties of a, of a country that they fall, like Palestine, right? Mm. Nobody is nobody wants to come to its aid, so it's going to, you know, it's, it's left alone to be bullied by everyone around it. And then, I mean, you know, and then, but then you have, but if you have everybody gathering and the same is true with people if you have an individual who says this is my right to be independent of you and whatever and people actually flock to defend him and defend that person then i don't think you know i think you come to the realization that there's more of us than there are of them yeah tiny <laughs> dot i love that <laughs> yeah i love uh, uh, like and roses uh the tiny dot it was uh, simply amazing i love it <laughs> i've seen it like so many times <laughs> it's like why are we afraid of them I like this tiny dot right <laughs> the tiny dot yeah it's just ridiculous why are we so afraid of the government because there are so many people protecting the government that's right <laughs> and, and the, <laughs> but it's just ridiculous. Once people realize that they are a lot more than the tyrannical people, then it's all over for them. And we'll have freedom once, <laughs> at that point. But yeah, yeah, it's until then we have to be afraid. Yeah, it's unfortunate. But I think, 
you know, but I think I think there is there's a the the hope is in is not in waiting for the government to come to its senses or for somebody to take office. I think the the real change is just in people who decide, you know what, I'm not going to deal with this shit anymore. I'm I'm not voting. I'm not, you know, I'm not going to I'm not going to go and and tell you what to do and I'm not going to petition and I'm not, you know, and I'm just going to go live my life the way I'm going to live my life and you know, and without regard, you know, I've told people that I've said, you know, look, I, I don't live with regard to the law. I live regard with regard to my own morals. I'm not going to kill you, not because it's against the law, but because I, I'm against killing. You know? well, I feel bad for killing innocent people, not because someone took me. It's bad because I actually ended someone's life. That, that, that right. is so weird. Right. It's... And just, hey, it's just black for that person. Not even a thought. Nothing. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, and but you know, I think you have to have a pretty low regard for life in general to feel okay about killing people. Yeah. You know, and and basically, you have to condition yourself to believe that the person you're killing isn't worth anything. You know, that's how you get away with death penalties and you know, and extermination camps and yeah. uh, even even military and and cops. They they can't believe that you're human. That you're the same as they are, because then it would distort their ability to, to do anything and, and be violent. But I don't know. Exactly. I was actually debating a soldier earlier. Well, debating and debating. He was getting emotional while I said he was a mercenary. <laughs> 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 but he actually said, uh, hold on, let me find it here. Um, it was there. He actually said that a soldier don't have to uh, have any moral or political grounds. He just has to do what the politicians tells him to do. That was what he said. He said that wow. right up front, nothing at all. And I was like, yeah. So we agree. <laughs> just, shit stay to say right there, Danish edition. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! Seriously, I I can't believe that there are people like that. Hey, I'm not responsible. Right. <laughs> put right. All the moral grounds onto them. So. Well, that's you know that they you know I had one person tell me that you know well the reason why we have this separation of powers is so that there's checks and balances and that nobody becomes more powerful. And I said, no, you have a separation of powers so that nobody has to be responsible. Yeah. That's the thing is that, well, you know, so the, so the executive branch says, well, you know, I don't make the laws, so I only enforce whatever the legislation says to do. So, I, you know, it's not my fault. I just enforce whatever that happens. Okay, fine. So then you go to the, judici the judges in the courts and they say, well, you know, we're only here to interpret whatever the law is. We don't make the laws either. And we weren't the ones to enforce it. You're just here. And now I have to make a decision. Then you go to the legislature and they say, well, you know, we're not the ones who signed off on it. The president is the one who signed it. And that's the executive branch. And, you know, and it's like, and it just goes in this huge circle. Then you find out that most of the people writing the laws used to be lawyers. So they used to be part of the judicial branch. So it's just, um, um, you know, this merging of different, there's no separation anymore. So yeah. nobody's responsible. That's the bottom line is that nobody's responsible anymore. You know, it's the same over here in Copenhagen. Actually, they just compete about spending the most money on. <laughs> Seriously, the the people spending the most money are the people getting most votes. That's amazing. Yeah, the one of the politicians, I think it's the the health minister or whatever he is, and he uh, spent has devoted a million that uh, a million Danish crowns or something. I'm not sure, to finding out which should be the national dish. <laughs> oh, right, the national dish. Yeah, <laughs> and it's been, it's been going on a lot in the media right now. <laughs> and it's just ridiculous because people are dying in the hospitals. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> and they, they take money from everything and spend it on roads and and what's it called the uh, giant uh, incursions into people's lives with a lot of people 
standing on the highways to stop innocent people and taxing them even more with tickets. <laughs> and, <laughs> and they spend time to harassing people for having plans. And that's about what they're spending the money on. Yeah. Bicycling Santa Clauses. We have that. <laughs> Bicycling Santa Clauses. Yeah, and we have um, benches with lights. <laughs> <laughs> we have city bikes worth 80,000 Danish crowns. City bikes? Like city? motorbikes? No. Bicycles. 80,000? That's. Uh, that's like eight thousand dollars. No, is it? No, that's more. No, ten thousand. Ten thousand dollars. It's like fifteen thousand, I think. Fifteen thousand dollar bicycles. Yeah. That's... Lance Armstrong's bike isn't fifteen thousand dollars. <laughs> but they do have a, a an iPad. <laughs> they have. Oh, okay. Okay then. <laughs> that's fine. I. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know about that part. <laughs> <laughs> the bicycle. <laughs> and and they spend the some of the the people spending the most taxes in Denmark are, are people using cars because there's a huge tax on gas. So they have a hedge right now going on of people driving in cars. People are in, in, driving in cars are evil apparently. So oh. they want to make the city more bicycle friendly, so people will ride their bikes instead. And then they want to ban cars in the city and of Copenhagen. That's that's what they're spending their money on right now. Banning cars? Yeah, they uh, put up tolls. Uh, they wanted to do it. I'm not sure if they ever did it, but they wanted to put up tolls all around Copenhagen, so people had to pay to get in the city. <laughs> And how do the politicians plan to get to and from work and all of that? They, they live, they'll be riding their bikes as well? They live in the city. And then, yeah. and of course, they are driving in their huge vans paid right. by yeah. the taxpayers. <laughs> right, right. They can drive in cars. That's okay. Yeah, yeah it's, always, it's always that way. You know, you can't, you can't have a gun, but the politicians are all protected by guns and they all have their, their armed men to protect them, and that's okay. Yeah, that's no problem at all. <laughs> right, that's fine. You it's, know, it's, it's the same. Uh, there's been some tests of the toilets in the parliament building, and they were full of cocaine. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Put that right through into the city water system, and <laughs> you'll have a very happy, happy <laughs> population of Danes. Yeah, well, I remember when Al Gore was all about the, you know, environment, and then they checked his house, and his house was so energy inefficient, like, he was, he was consuming more energy than his entire state in his house, or something like that, like, some obnoxious shit like that, and when they, when they outed him, and they said, look at you, you with your, with your personal jet, and your, you know, your, your huge ass mansion that consumes just sucks in all this energy and all that and you're telling us about you know the environment and so he went and got solar panels and he says well I'll just give money you know to environmental causes and that will that will offset what I use and what I burn and they're, yeah, yeah, they're just a bunch of hypocrites. Plus he's just he just wants to give money to get away with it because he earns even more from his books and talks and whatever so yeah yeah right right of course, he just he doesn't want to live up to his own words he just wants to yeah, exactly pay someone else to do it and get paid in the meantime or whatever <laughs> yeah for the theory yeah and then fine everybody else for not living up to his standard yeah, exactly <laughs> i mean of course how do you have that much money and you can't live up to your own standard i make a fraction of what you make i can't live up to that standard <laughs> It's the same with it's the same with people wanting to uh, telling us to live healthy. Of course, it's the politicians that wants that right. that because they can afford going out and buy equal equal. I can't do that. Right. I have like two thousand dollars a month or something before <laughs> I have paid any upfront expenses. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, they want you to buy organic food and, and all of this. And, and they, you know, and it's like, okay, well, I'll buy it, but you have, you know, but then don't tax it. 
don't tax so, me and give make it tax exempt and then I won't you know then I can afford it but yeah, it's, it's, it's actually cheaping for the farmers to send their, their cattle and the pigs and everything to Germany to get it slaughtered and they send it back up here <laughs> they, yeah we they have, send they, they transport the, the meat uh, the, the living creatures to Germany to get it chopped up to send it back to Denmark because it's too expensive to cause of tax slaughter yeah there's a tax on slaughtering your animals no just meat in itself is expensive to do and the t and the wages are just <laughs> insane we we have yes. danish crown is one of the only slaughter companies that actually stays in denmark still and they're probably going soon as well <laughs> Well, there wasn't there. But I saw a meme. Where did I see this? I saw a meme on Facebook about a Danish girl working for McDonald's and making twenty two dollars an hour. Yeah, is that true? What is twenty two dollars? That's like hundred and twenty Danish crowns. That could probably be true. I haven't worked in McDonald's, so I'm not sure. But yeah, it could probably be true. But keep do it you have a minimum wage? We have uh, some unions that fight for a minimum wage, but we don't have one by law. They, however, oh. will will use violence to get you to accept their demands. However, so okay, so, yeah, and they they are of course exempt from the law because unions they donate a lot of money, and they, right. they just got tax. Oh, I, I'm not sure if they got tax exemptions. Oh. I have no lighting on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if they got tax exemptions or if they are going to get it, but I heard some talk about it not too long ago where they want to get exemptions to one of the biggest unions, the red one. <laughs> so, so, yeah. <laughs> but, okay. uh, just, but remember when, when you try to think about the, the McDonald's workers getting minimum wage, we have we pay like one one of the small meals is like twenty dollars, I think. Between ten and twenty dollars for a meal, and and the sizes of the meals are way smaller than in the U.S. Way smaller. It's like ah. a, a cheeseburger is like this. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's it's not like it's worth anything to get $120 an hour in Denmark. Nothing. That, that's, uh, that's nothing. And you'll probably not work that many hours because of it, so... <laughs> right, right. <coughs> ah. Yeah, I would think so. I, I mean, if you're, if you, even if you make what's equivalent to $20 an hour, which I guess is like 100 and something crowns, if you lose, like... 40% of that. Yeah, this is 40% tax, income tax as well, just for the for the lowest, for the, the, right. uh, for the poorest people with the lowest income, that's 40%. And 70% for the highest incomes. Right. So then you're not, and then if everything's expensive, then you still can't live off of that. Nope. Right? I mean, you'd still not be able to live well off of that kind of money. No, not, not at all. Absolutely not. You, you, where the people actually, Denmark has the population with the most debt, personal debt in the world. Or something. No. Yeah. It's, really? Yeah, it's, it's true. You have to borrow for everything. A car is hundred and eighty percent taxed. So you have when you buy a ten thousand dollar car in. in in the U.S., you have to pay twenty-eight thousand dollars for it here, <laughs> and that's just the registering tax. Uh, and there comes every other tax, <laughs> and you have to pay pay just to be allowed to have the car. You have to pay something called weight taxation as well. <laughs> weight, like how heavy it is, weight. Yeah, the more okay. the car weighs, the the more you pay. <laughs> I can't even see this. This is what's really sad is that, you know, I mean, and I don't feel bad about bitching about my taxes because taxes are wrong no matter what. 
I don't care. You take 1% and you take 100%. I don't fucking care. <laughs> it sucks. But I can't even imagine what it would be like. I couldn't even, I, 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 I mean, I don't even see that as some sort of like ideal scenario where I'm like, oh, okay, well, if 40% of my taxes goes, that's fine because then I'll have everything I need. And it's like, no, I won't. <laughs> I'll still be struggling and I still won't have anything that I need. And then forcing me to be on on debt and welfare is no better. <laughs> I mean, the, yeah, how the hell does... I, I, I think it's around 800,000 people now that are on welfare in Denmark out of a population of 6 million. And That's disgusting! <laughs> we have just as many social workers and uh, institutions. Uh, public servants or whatever it's called that works in the schools and stuff like that. And, so, and that's not counting the military or the police. <laughs> so that's 1.6 million people living on welfare, not counting military and police. <laughs> that's... It's, if it's, you take a so bad... It, it's okay. like one-third of the population finances the other two thirds. <laughs> right? When all said and done, it's that's what you're doing. You but you also but the government has made it so that you have to be dependent. Mm. You, you you can't you can't even I mean, had they just let you keep your money in the first place, you'd probably be able to do everything you needed to do. I mean, imagine getting forty a forty percent raise just <laughs> just by not losing your taxes, you know? Uh, if I had uh, and 100 crowns uh, an hour job, I, I wouldn't care about going down in wages if the taxes wasn't there. Fuck that. Right. I could live off, right. off of that. <laughs> right, you could do anything. You could, could, yeah, that'd be fine. I could actually live off of less than half of that if no taxes at all because you'd save right. on everything. But everything in Denmark is like 400% taxed if you count everything from the start of one thing's production to the end till you buy it. So, right. uh, as an example, if you buy a, buy a, let's just say a juice, from the worker that that actually grabs the, the oranges, he has to get, he, his wages are taxed as well. The right. sales of those oranges are taxed. The guy packing the oranges, wages are taxed, and the sales off of the oranges again are taxed, and so on, until you get it as a consumer. So in reality, it's more like 400% or even more, actually. <laughs> right, then to, then to transport the oranges, yeah. right? You have, you have the vehicle tax, the registration on the vehicle, the fuel tax, the yeah. everything, just to move the oranges across the country to wherever. <laughs> yeah. People normally just take the taxation in general from from you buy from it's in the store to you buy it so we have it's said that you pay like 80 percent tax in denmark in all for a low wage low income household but when in reality I, it's more than that it's more you pay more than 100 percent of each crown you make so it's just right. ridiculous yeah, it's, it's not even commerce. It's not, it's, like it's not even commerce anymore. No, it's just the government giving you money. That's what it is. And telling yeah, you what to do. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's really, it's quite sad. I mean, I wonder, you know, I mean, I tried to talk to somebody about, you know, I don't know if you've ever talked to anybody who who, like, who believes in those uh, resource-based economies, like the oh, Venus yeah. Project. Yeah. And <laughs> you all need to have diamond tables right now. <laughs> right, <laughs> and uh, we all and and all the machines will take care of us, and yeah. all of the all, all those the, machines not invented yet. <laughs> I said, I asked him. I said, okay, but who does all the who does all the menial work? Like, who does all the work you don't want to do? Right? I said because these these jobs you say are are slave jobs. Nobody should have to do them and and whatever. And I said, okay, so then who does it? Who picks the apples? Like who who does something like that? Who who cleans the buildings or or washes the cars or whatever? And he's and I said if I don't want to do it, then I have to hire somebody to do it. 
right? I certainly won't expect them to do it for free. I would never expect somebody to go clean my toilets for free. I would expect they'd want to be compensated. Yeah. And then, so what? So what? You know, what, how did they? He says, "Oh no, 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 no! The machines will do it." And I and I said and I said, "What machines? And who builds them? And who takes care of them? And who maintains them? Who repairs them when machines they break?" Machines will do that. <laughs> well, machines will also do that. I didn't know that part, and I was like, "Oh, okay, then that's fine." <laughs> you know, and they and they say this, and I, and I said, "Okay, but then." I said, but just in terms of practicality, just in terms of practicality, right? I said, for example, you have, let's say, Norway has great salmon. That's fine. Then you have, you know, parts of the United States that has great blueberries and another part that has avocados and strawberries and another part that sells oranges well, right? And they all, but that's part of their geography. Like naturally they occur there. You don't, have to, you know, it's not like you're trying to grow tomatoes in Siberia. You're, you, you're going to grow tomatoes where they grow best, you know, and whatever. So each play, each geography has its resources, right? Mm. How do you manage to take, you know, the abundance of all the resources of each region and distribute them so that people can have oranges where they don't grow and salmon where they don't swim and all that? And I said, without trade. How do you do this without trade? And he says, and he says, well, you know, you could just give it. And I said, who, who the hell goes <laughs> and 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 fishes for salmon for free? <laughs> that shit's huge. <laughs> that's <laughs> pain in the ass. That's pretty dangerous, actually. I know. Oops. And the crab fisherman, why should they have to put their life on the line for free? I know. <laughs> It's one of the most dangerous jobs yeah. in the world is fishing. It's... And I'm like, who does that for free? Mm. Like, I would never do that for free. It's just insane. And, and... <laughs> <laughs> But I, I think we'll come to that point one day that the, the Venus Project will be a reality. But but it's gonna. I'm not sure when that's going to be. First, we had to invent all the machines to do everything. Right, and, but every time I see like those movies talking about you know uh, artificial intelligence, yeah. it's always the machines that end up realizing how inefficient and horrible humans are and trying to eliminate them. I'm like, I don't need that shit. <laughs> I don't uh, want to invent a machine that will ultimately turn on me because they think I suck. <laughs> uh, but, but the problem with those scenarios are that machines should they the machines in those movies that never use logic. Because logic dictates that you cannot claim every human is acting for one. No, one human is acting for every human, or something like that. So they would never destroy humanity because of what some humans would do. They would destroy the evil humans, but never all of humanity. I, just, I simply when, couldn't believe that. Well, the only thing I would think of is that if a machine is des is designed to find efficiency, right? If that's what they're trying to do is make things more efficient, so they look for efficiency, then by their own deduction, they would say that humans are not very efficient. Yeah. You know, but that, but that their nature is not very efficient. But then they wouldn't have an artificial intelligence anyway, because they wouldn't be thinking, they would be acting according to their program. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. I, but that's what I would fear too, is that if their program <laughs> ultimately led to that. Yeah. I don't know. I, But you you could easily build fail safes in that. That's no problem. It's just a single code. Just you cannot harm. Uh, <laughs> I would be really scared code, about something like that. And, and another code on top of that, which says you cannot rewrite your own code. <laughs> right. You'd have to have a million fail safes in there yeah. to do that. But, but but at the same time, I think you can't live. If, if I don't think human beings could live without trade. Oh. I don't think so. I don't. I don't think so. I don't think well, that. Well, when we get the the three three D printer to print uh, eight uh, atoms, but no, you know, eight, eight atoms. No, atoms. That's what. Atoms. Called. Yeah, atoms. Yeah. <laughs> when you get a three D printer that can print that, then trade wouldn't be necessary because you could just print whatever you want. But but until I... then, you know, trade is necessary because no one wants to do anything for free. <laughs> Yeah, and I don't. I mean, I think it would be pretty sad if everybody just had a printer that just printed what they wanted. But it will come to that at one point. 
It's, it's not. You think uh, so? Yeah. It, it, you, you just need a, a 3D printer that can rearrange atoms. Nothing else. Then it can print whatever you want. Yeah, I don't. Well, everything is. So you, but that would be like spontaneous generation. You would have to literally create matter, and that's like impossible. No, you have every atom you need right there. And then they just it just regenerates. No, it would regenerate just, atoms just, on a regular. You just take it out of the air, and I'm not sure how that would work actually. But my guess would be that you could take it out of the air and rearrange the atoms. So instead of oxygen, you you rearrange them to something else. Oh, I see. So the, in 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 my hypothesis hypothesis <laughs> hypothesis it could be a reality, but again it it, it we need, that needs to be some human to invent it first before it's a reality. So yeah, uh, yeah. I don't know. I think I kind of like the idea of there being. I mean, I don't mind the modern conveniences. I I'm the first to admit that you know I, I like a lot of my comforts of. <laughs> you know, but at the same time, I, I think taking away, like, I think trade is what it, it keeps us connected, you know, like, a, I mean, without, you know, because they're, because they're talking about how, you know, if you, if you have, if you just have machines do everything for you, then all you are left to do is basically play and visit and, and be humane, you know, and, you and I think, always well, improve them. you can always improve science, always, oh, not science, but technology, always. You can always yeah. invent new stuff. You have to be, before you you could get a three D printer to print something. You had to invent it first, so you knew how it was assembled. So right. So there would, would always be stuff to do. I think. And, yeah. And you could always yeah, think about the so. universe in some way or another. I don't think you could. The human race will ever get it to the bottom of the universe. I don't think so. No, yeah, I, I think that's that's fair, but I think that at the same time, if machines are doing everything for you, then the only thing you have left is to just is either you're gonna try and invent something, or you're not, right? I, and if you're not, then you're just kind of sitting there waiting for the machine to live your life for you. You just get fat and lazy, like you just kind of deteriorate, right? I mean, you don't, but, well, that depends on how society is gonna evolve, because it, yeah. who knows? It might be. Not be in, in the next thousand years, ten thousand years, a hundred thousand years, we'll get a atom printer. So, who knows? It, it could be that the human race would actually be a whole different kind of race with a different yeah. pattern. So, I'm not sure, but I'm looking forward to it. If it happens in my <laughs> lifetime, that would be so awesome. What, what would the state do then? Right. Well, I mean, just the internet alone, you know, has kind of posed quite a threat to the state, you know, because it's, it's, it's not a utility. It's just kind of out there, you know, <laughs> and, <not> uh, distraction. <laughs> ah, I love that dog. Hi, dog. Oh, look at that face. Look at how sweet she is. She's not a, she's not a bad dog. She's a totally sweet dog. Oh. She's look at the way she's taking her ears back. She does that when she wants something. <laughs> oh, when she wants something. I'm not sure if she just wants attention or if she actually wants something to eat or anything. What's the time? Oh, we've been going on for an hour now. <laughs> okay, she's hungry. I think we okay. probably stop. I'm. I'm We've been going on for. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for doing this. It was really interesting. Yep. Same here. We'll talk again soon. <laughs> yes, we will. <laughs> All right. Bye. Bye.